Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another quick pick prediction video. In this video, I'll be predicting the welterweight bout between Vicente Luque versus Bilal Muhammad 2. So these two 4 before the first time Vicente Luque just went out there, just starts him real quick and got him out of there. It was not much. I think it was like under a minute. Well, not like under two minutes for sure. Like doing out there, starched him. But I think a lot has changed. I feel like both guys have gotten a lot better. But ultimately to me, I feel like Bilal Muhammad has shown the more improvements to me. I feel like some of the same weaknesses are still there for Vicente Luque. But um, Bilal Muhammad has mostly closed his gaps, I feel. Vicente Luque is still a beast on the feet. Offensively, defensively, still very much questionable. But the guy's a fighter. He comes to bang. One of the most dangerous offensive fighters in the whole sport, pound for pound. But defensively, always leaves a lot to, to be desired. Gets hit way too much. Way too hittable. But yeah, how I see this one right here. I'm going with Bilal Muhammad in this one. That's what I see. But um, decision victory. Bilal Muhammad is a decision fighter. Fire rounds. I think it's going to be a case where Bilal Muhammad is not really going to play too much to try to strike one of them. He's going to go out there and look to fight a full mixed martial arts fight. Be on his bike. Be moving. And not really stand there to trade in the mid-range with Vicente Luque. Are really looking there to be too much like Constantly to be looking for takedowns. I think he's confident enough to defend the submissions of Vicente Luque. Probably get a leg and hold on to it, pass it, so he's not getting caught up in no neck chokes and like be able to easily relieve pressure by passing the half like you no know, half guard or side control and be smarter. I feel like he's like I said pretty this, like submission savvy. I feel like the only thing that you always got to worry about with any fighter, you can get knocked out. Like you can have all the skills in the world, you get touched, you get knocked out. That's his biggest concern. I feel like it's the jitsu is his biggest concern with Vicente Luque. I feel like skill is his biggest issue. I feel like that potential of a knockout. But I feel like he's going to be, like I said, stay on, stay on his bike. But like I said, be on his toes. I'm not, I wouldn't say bike. Be on his toes. Bike might be a bad thing. Like, you know, been on, allowing Vicente Luque to walk you down and then start chewing you up with leg kick. That's be a bad thing. But say so been on his toes, but then bouncing and bouncing out, probably slips on those kicks and then constantly stay in his face and look to overwhelm him with his work rate and his volume and level changes. And look to wear him down against his cage and start to work for some takedowns off the cage. Still see this is a very competitive fight. Definitely gonna be rounds being given up to both guys. It ain't gonna be a one sided like what Wonderboy versus um Bilal Muhammad was, where he was just taking him down and controlling him the whole fight. Vicente Luca would definitely have his moment, would definitely have his rounds. Probably stuff some takedowns, might even tip a good submission and or be able to use like a threat of a guillotine or threat of a Dars or a highable guillotine to maybe Force Bilal Muhammad to give up the takedown, give up position, or both. Like I said, it'd be a very competitive fight. But I feel ultimately, like Bilal Muhammad, is, that's where he thrives. He thrives in these cardio high pace, like these cardio high pace type fights. I'm not saying Vicente Luque doesn't do well in these fights either, or like he has bad cardio. But this is really where Bilal Muhammad thrives, and he's gonna thrive in a fight where he's gonna force Vicente Luque to work, and he's gonna thrive. Like his pace is only gonna get better as the fight goes on. I feel like Vicente Luque, not like saying he's a bad cardio fighter, but his pace is definitely, this style is definitely favors Bilal Muhammad more is what I'm saying. Yeah, Bilal thrives in this environment. So I feel like very close fight. Um, but also you've seen fights where Luke has allowed people that he should not have to be able to, you know, be so close in total or land some shot. Like Nico Price, touch him up, land some, bust him up a couple of times. Like, not, I didn't, not saying he, all I'm saying, like, he did a lot of damage to the face, took a lot of damage against Nico Price, which he shouldn't in the second fight. First fight, he ran through Nico Price. Second fight, took a lot of unnecessary damage. The um, Barbarina fight took a lot of unnecessary damage. I think he fought Mike Perry. That he was giving up takedowns to Mike Perry, so that's not a good look. And the KS fight, I feel like KS had just made a glaring issue. Like he tried to go for submission over position and didn't end up getting caught in the submission. And KS is very weak to the body and very weak with neck chokes or really guillotines and darts. And so he ended up in his weakest submission area is Luke's strongest submission. So like you want submission over position, and that's not what um. Bilal Muhammad does. He's gonna, he'll fight for like you know he'll fight for five hundred years and not get a finish, or like in a fight, like a very very long fight, a fight to the finish. You know everyone will leave the stands, and it's call it a day. Like everybody will leave the stand. The fight won't even have a definitive result. Like it was a fight to the finish with involving Bilal Muhammad because he'll go for position over submission every single time, and he'll or he'll even attempt a submission, like give a little weak attempt at a submission just to reestablish position by you defending that weak attempt at a submission. So guys, it's not a guy that's gonna. Be high, high risk, high reward. If I very smart, he'll make the right moves out there, and won't really look to give up anything because he's like I said, he's not looking to finish. Or I mean, he's not 
you know, prioritizing the finish. He's not. That's not a reason why, one, he's kind of boring. Two, he's kind of weird. And yeah, like, kind of boring, kind of weird, and a safe fighter. So it's not like he has a sighting style. It's not like he has a sighting personality. That's a reason why the UFC is hoping he loses. They give him a guy that already beat him, hoping he loses to him or somebody else stop him. They don't want him in the title fight. They could try to say this, sorry, but in reality, everyone knows that the general public ain't a real big fan of Bilal Muhammad. I'm not saying I'm not. Bilal Muhammad's cool with me, whatever the case may be. But Dana White, UFC, just by how they be matching, like they don't, they're not really high. They're hoping one boy beat him. Now they're hoping Luke beat him. They don't want to see him top out. I guess right now, right now they're happy to have Usman. They're happy to have Covington. Happy to have Kamzat. Hopefully they like a guy like that. You know, wrestlers like that. Hopefully they say if he does get there, those guys will beat him. They're hoping that. But I feel like UFC worst nightmare will be if he wins. <laughs> wins the belt. That's probably be their worst nightmare, at least in the welterweight division. But anywho, that's besides the point. I feel like he'll be able to have similar success with his wrestling. And in those same positions, he's going to value position over submission. So he's not going to really give up a neck to get to get it choked out. And if it does come, you know, a, a choke does present itself or a submission does present itself, he'll be privy to it. And like I said, I have to give a position, roll through, and just come back. He's not like he's a guy that has questionable cardio or he's had cardio issues or I don't know, has feel like he's gonna have such a struggle to get it to that point. So he's gonna be like, I gotta have this position. So he's gonna be so aggressive to maintain it or so aggressive that he leaves him so vulnerable. Like I say, he's gonna be limiting the amount of time he's vulnerable in this fight. And in general, he's not a vulnerable guy that's gonna risk vulnerability too much out there. Unnecessary. Like so he's gonna he's a safe fighter, he's gonna fight safe. He's gonna be able to mix those takedowns in there, value position over submission. And in a relatively comp- competitive fight. That's gonna make that's gonna be the clearest thing in this fight. His control time on the ground, and probably some little bit of ground and pound in there, but more so just camping out in positions and not really, like I said, committing too much or over committing the word and giving up those positions for either a reversal or solid submission attempts. That's gonna put him in any necessary danger or give up his authority in the fight. So in this fight, I got Bilal Muhammad via decision.